This used to be, actually be the, the fanciest place on the Oregon coast. This used to be a private country club. I think they moored something like 600 boats here. I mean, this place was three long sets of docks, a thousand feet long. And it's fallen apart the last 30 years. These are abandoned docks and it's on mud. So most boats are gonna get ruined out here. So we actually leased the space here. 275 a month. It's almost abandoned. It's perfect because it's in our price range and we get to build this whole project in this beautiful area with hardly any outside interference. This is the, the galley. This is the first thing that we built. So we cook with propane. We heat with propane. We have a mini bathroom. We actually just use basic uh, porta potties and we take it up to make sure we don't flush anything into the bay. And that just slides down. Slide and down, you push it. it. You have a pump to push it. Okay. Oh, wow. oh, there's water. There's actually flowing water. It's that easy. Holds two gallons. So we have one in here and one in the living quarters. And this is our mini barge. But right now, this is our dining room. <laughs> so we sit here on the Oregon coast and we sit here and we look out at nature. We have baby otters and eagles and 20 different types of birds. As you go down, all this keeps going all the way down. So this is a design that I made. These plastic, we have a hundred of these. They're four feet wide, eight feet long, three feet tall. There's solid brick foam in the middle and they hold 5,000 pounds of buoyancy. They're just dock floats. They're the biggest ones they make. They're Army Corps of Engineer certified, so it's military grade floats. So it doesn't matter if you shoot them, dent them, put holes in them, the whole project floats. How'd you get them all here? We actually lined them up in the parking lot. All 100 of these floats weigh 300 pounds each. <laughs> we manually carried all these 300 pound floats down that ramp into the water. <laughs> and so, oh, there are my boys. You can't be a survivalist without your Xbox for the kids. And, uh, so that's CJ and Jonathan. Hi, where'd you find the TV? We got it. Is that the... Self-reliant, I think, is being able to sustain yourself learn all the skills but my thing is this is all based so we can share our knowledge with other people so they can get them off the grid and get them so they're self-reliant push her up hey. i've got a lot of logistics background i was in the army the national guard and the emergency operations center for the state of washington you can move it with one hand it's so light and so it's like you know what we want to go north and help people up north it's like how do you bring enough supplies and so people were like build a barge do you like boat life? Yeah. What? What do you like about it? Um, I get this one? Giant, oh, your house is just a giant tinker toy set. Over here. The whole project, a giant 20 by 20 foot Lego set. So he's going to stop the whole thing with just barely one foot. I mean, it's no effort. So every piece is a, we build the floats in 20 by 20 foot sections. Is this the um, new bunkhouse? This is the new bunkhouse. Oh no, this yeah. is the galley. That's the bunkhouse. Yeah, they're all fun. You put one 20 foot section, connect the next 20 foot section, the next 20 foot section. You can literally take them apart and re put them anywhere where you want it to. So this project can grow as big as you want. This is a 20 by 20 foot piece. This is our 20 by 20 foot lumber storage. And that's a 20 by 40 foot piece. So that's what two pieces look like together. So the kids helped build 100% of this project. But they actually, these two probably put 90% um, of these floats together. So what they do is they take two of these and T-frame it. So everything is pieces of two. Then they build another set of two, another set of two, put four together, make it 20 by 20 foot box, grab the next two and just do the same process over and over again. Jonathan, make on the other side. This one right on top of be good. So literally all it takes is one person or a kid to do this entire project. It's that simple. Eventually this boat will be 60 by 120 and it'll be two stories tall. And the goal is to build this over three years and then go up to Alaska. We have a lumber mill so we can actually go to each community and really it's fix homes, fix docks, show these people how to do this stuff. 
this is it. You put the wooden under here. And this is actually the blade to cut it. And so you can go down to a sixteenth of an inch. You can make all the different kind of measurements for your wood. So you just are learning everything yes. from yeah. your dad, like as you've got. Yeah. From framing to screwing, nailing, generator, oh, working with the generators. Is it difficult? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Like putting this up was really easy. You just oh, I had someone come over here, stand on a ladder and hold this end up and then while they screwed in that side. What I actually did is I stood on the other side of this on top of the floats and just screwed it in on that side. Yeah, we put the cross beams, like almost every piece of wood we've touched at least once. And it does not move at all. I mean, you can do pull ups on it. It does not move. Our actual bed over here is part of the actual wall. The wall, half the bed post is the bed. The bed post is part of the wall. Screwed into the floor, the roof, and the wall over there. Springs. <laughs> you can put almost anything on there. It's got five two by four supports. If something hit it, it would this would help raise this wall. So it's pretty much this is just a wall. You just put a sheet of plywood on it. It would be a pretty stable wall. These aren't in here yet, just because we just got this done yesterday. Do you now think it's possible to build your own house? Yes. Yeah. Could you build your own house right now? Do you yeah. Know? Yes. I could. I could do it by myself. Oh, together we could do it by ourselves. And how old are you? Uh, fifteen. Almost yeah. sixteen. I'm fourteen. We actually did most of this. My dad is kind of getting old, so we do actually a lot of it. We screwed the walls on. It's screwed yeah, on. It, there's screws on the other side. Yeah, we moved the floats over like two inches, and so we got back there with the drill, we put the screws in, we had like that much room. He just plans it and we build it. <laughs> we still got quite a bit of structure to build. This is just a temporary thing to help, help us live in here for like a year or so. This is just a 60 foot utility shed. Napping quarters. Napping quarters, and <laughs> we still have three fourths of the project to build. So this will stay here to store the extra food and supplies and the lumber. So while. during the nine months of rain and wet, it can be stored here, and then we'll actually move into the real living quarters later. So this right here is just utility. So we're going to put a wall up here today, and then the sister, three girls will have their own triple bunk bed right here. So starting this weekend, the whole family will get to move down here. There's a bed in storage, so they can store all their stuff down for their clothes and their toys and stuff, and then beds on each side. The goal is to be able to reuse 100% of this. So every part of this project right here can be reused for a project for later. So every single piece. So we've bought 1,600 pieces of wood for this project, and all of our scraps will probably fill four or five um, little five-gallon buckets, that's it, or like two wheelbarrows. What's neat about being on the ocean is we're building for a movement for 360 degrees. Everything will always be built into the walls, into the roof, into the floor. So every new addition actually adds structural support to the rest of the structure. So no freestanding stuff. Everything actually helps something else. So twice a day, this whole project's on some or all of the mud. And then part of the day, it's all floating. So you got to build for a structure that can actually sit in every type of environment. It's cordless, so it doesn't do much more than cutting a 2 by 4 that's cut thousands of cuts these boys have done. So everything we do is we try not to buy from the store. We just make our own seats. And so we just get foam and so they're $20. making it. Everything is, we're trying to not just buy everything at Walmart or somewhere else. It goes teach them actually how to sew, how to make things. And, and but I it goes to teach them how to do it. So that they take pride in, we've made all these things that just going to Ikea or somewhere and just buy it. So take it off and then but Have you taken a shop class? No. I'm the shop teacher. <laughs> um, oh, you got your red ones. I guess we can use the other ones. Let's put the three inch screws in for right now. You guys can use those. People used to build their own homes and do their own electrical and their own plumbing. Nowadays, people can't fix the most basic thing. And these guys can actually build computers. They can help me do electrical. They can help me do plumbing. They can do the framing. They can do the flooring. They can do decking. So the goal is teach them life skills so they can actually do all this. So what they're doing right now is we put um, two by six by 20 foot down and we still got a screw man so the deck is now strong. The 
but we decked 60 feet worth of decking in a single day. So these boys have put in probably 20,000 nails and screws in the last few months. He should know he pays for them. Yes. See so how quickly they do that? Lots of practice. <laughs> Way to go. Can you still pull the head out or is it stuck? This project has gone really slow because it's going at their pace, not at my pace. My thing is an experiment and practice. So we've been practicing for three years before we came here just showing the kids, well, if you put the wood like this, what happens? You don't want these ones, ones flush, right, Dad? Let's let the water go yep. through. And then so I'll instead of just reading about it, it's one of those, well, let's turn that wood that way and let's see what happens. I just can't make an angle cut to save my life. Jonathan's got some knots over there. We go. So the, the thing is, I, I, it's nice that if something happens to me, I've trained them so they can help the next person and then the next person. Instead of just calling 1-800, someone come fix it for me. It's, no, no, let's show you how to, let's show you how to fix it. Because those are life skills I think that are very important for people to have and it's just not being passed from generation to generation anymore. But they built the galley. The neat thing is the boys came up with this idea. <laughs> That this whole wall, when it's nice, the whole wall lifts up and provides shade and uh, takes two people to lift up. So you can actually have a, a view or you can actually roll these things up and roll the tarp up. And it looks like you're looking at like a giant bay window out to the ocean. They built this, put it on hinges, and they, the boys did this themselves. I told them everything they build has to have multiple purposes. And so they said, well, we want to be able to close it. We want to open it. When it's so rainy here, we keep the tarp down. But in the nice. evenings or in the mornings, they roll this up. You get the sun in here, you see the whole bay. You excited about being on the on the ocean? Yeah. And living? Do you mind having a mobile life that you're not in you know, one spot? Or are you? I don't mind. That's fine. We have a um, eagle that actually lives up somewhere in the trees. Yep. He comes and hunts in here. We have a family of sea otters. And we have a raccoon, which my little brother named Miko. <laughs> Yeah. Every once in a while you see the otters and you see some really big fish somewhere underneath you and they're getting comfortable with us so they actually come right up to us. I like your pantry. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take much, does it? Nope. So it's not hidden in a drawer somewhere. I know where it is. Everything's yeah. in bins. Oh yeah? We yeah. Label, try to label there? everything. Oh. It drives my bad. wonderful Crazy. handwriting. <laughs> so let's measure off two inches and then make a 90 degree cut. So the cool thing is the kids, they can actually go measure different parts of the boat and get the angles, come back. And I tell them, just go cut six of these, or I think they cut 20, 30 different pieces yesterday to make the beds. I'm very proud of these guys. I, I, I help, and I, I can, I'll put the screws in and some nails in, but they did most of the cuts. It's a flat cut. Occasionally I'll do a couple of important cuts, but besides that, it's one of those I want them to take pride in their work and actually get it done. So my thing is I let them fail. Because in life, you're going to get lots of advice. And so you kind of nod and like, thanks for the advice, but I'm going to go prove it for myself. So we, we, I really believe in trust, but verify. These benches are just three two by sixes just laid across, which eventually became a very large pane, which led to the decision of making these pieces just separate pieces. Kind of fun feature. Decisions that were made on that, which just did not work out well, left, oh, led us to great decisions onto this one. Learning as you go, right? Yeah. But this is a Swiss army um, of all boats. This is called T framing, and what we'll do is we'll put two more, the shape of a T, and we'll put two more on each side, and when we need to, the ones in the front will go six feet to the left, the ones on the right will go six feet to the right, and the, we have a spare deck that you just lift up over, so we can get an extra 16 feet longer boat, an extra 12 feet wider, and it's all hidden. Um, 
All the space here is extra hidden storage. This whole thing all the way through is all storage. So you can put fishing poles and all sorts of other stuff down there. We're still working on it, so we have pre-drilled pieces that are still in there. So before we put this together, we actually tried six or seven different ways to put the floats together, and we didn't like any of them because we listened to some quote unquote other experts, and we're like, well, you know what? Let's try it that way. And okay, let's go back to the original plan, and because we've never seen these floats before until a few months ago, so that, okay, now that they're here, um, now we got to actually try it with the real floats. We went back to our original plan of T-framing. Show you guys do your sit-ups. So they found out that they can actually do sit-ups out here now. This is the coolest jungle gym ever. I got you. I'm taking the seat off though. A lot of people like to be survivalists, yeah. and that's just for themselves. It doesn't do any, and I'm a military guy. I used to work at the emergency operations center, so I'm the person you call for an emergency. My thing is, if you're surviving just for yourself, that doesn't seem like a good plan. Survive so you can show others and help other people survive. Now that's a good plan. That's a lot better plan. So you can sit right here and do sit-ups over the side <laughs> of the boat. You just hang from it. Self-reliant, I think, is being able to sustain yourself, learn all the skills. And like if something down here breaks, you can just bend over and drill it in. But also, if you do it just because you want to get off the grid, that doesn't seem like a really worthwhile goal to me. It's like, woohoo, I can all do it and hide in the mountains by myself. That really doesn't get you anything besides, woohoo, I don't have to pay utility bill. To make sure the kids stay in shape, all the kids do 50 sit-ups, push-ups, and leg lifts before every meal. That's from my army days. <laughs> yeah, he can do it by himself. And so my thing is I want to teach these guys, but not to stop there, so they can teach their children also teach all the different community places as we go.